welcome 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 thank you jesus welcome 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 to the jeff blue plus card welcome glory to god go ahead and share my god welcome 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 happy sunday evening to everyone Welcome. Good evening, everybody. Welcome. Hallelujah. I'll put you in front. Welcome. In front of my melody. You are all that matters. Hallelujah. You are all that matters. I'll make room for two. You and I. Welcome. You are all You are all that matters. You are all that matters. Hallelujah. Welcome. Glory to God. What would I be for if, if I, I don't, don't have you in my life? life? What, what would I, I become if you take the Holy Ghost? What would I become of me if I didn't see life? What would I be so? Now I come to realize that you are all I have. You are all that matters. You are all that matters. I'll put you in front. Welcome. In front of my Good evening. Good evening. Welcome. Hallelujah. I'll make room for two. You and I, Jesus. Blessings, blessings. Hallelujah. Is it the house or is it the car? I give it all to you. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody go ahead and invite someone. Let them know we're going to pray. What? Would I become of me? What would have been said of me if you didn't hold my hand? Now I've come to realize that you are all I have. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody go ahead and begin to spread the word. You and I, Jesus. Somebody go ahead and spread the word. Somebody go ahead and spread the word.
somebody go ahead and begin to share I like to tell people to share why because some of us we have some people in our family with some serious issues serve the Lord. I don't have you in my life what will I do, what will I do if, you take the Holy Ghost? if you take the Holy Ghost Let me break your houses. Let me break your money. I do 
God wants. All I want is Jesus. All I want is the Holy Ghost. All I want is the kingdom. Be that manifest on the earth. Put you in front. Thank you, Jesus. I just feel like worshiping God. Hallelujah. You are all that matters, Daddy. You are all that matters. Jesus. You and I, Jesus. You are all that matters. You are all that matters. I'll put you in front of in front of my destiny you are all that matters all that matters i'll make room for two make room for two you and i you and jesus christ and let him be all that matters to you hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus I just want to say welcome to all that is here. Welcome to those that are on their way. Welcome, welcome, welcome. God bless you. God bless you. Happy Sunday evening. Happy Sunday night. Hallelujah. Happy Monday morning to those who are in Europe and Britain. Happy Monday morning to those of you who are in Britain and Europe. Happy Sunday evening and Sunday night to those of you in our time. Glory to God. Welcome, 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 welcome. I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I just want to say I'm excited to be here. If it had not been for the Lord who is on my side, I don't know where I would be. Maybe lost someplace and, and forgotten. Hallelujah. But thank God we are not forgotten. Thank God we are not forgotten. Thank God you are not forgotten. He knows your name. Hallelujah. He knows your name. Sister Olive, he knows your name. Sister Petrina, he knows your name. My brother Samuel Okika, he knows your name. Sister Michelle, he knows your name. My brother Charles, he knows your name. Sister Tisha Dawkins, he knows your name. You are not forgotten. Sister Sonia Stevenson, you are not forgotten. My brother Stanford, you are not forgotten. Sister Annette, you are not forgotten. He knows your name. Sister Danisha, you are not forgotten. Stay home Lewis you are not forgotten wherever you're connecting from I just want you to know sister Yolanda you are not forgotten God has not forgotten you sister Jackie Chambers you have not been forgotten God will never forget about you continue in prayer sister Marcia Jones you are not forgotten sister Karine what you are not forgotten my God Saskia you are not forgotten sister Lindona Church I just came to let you know you are not forgotten. My brother Ty, you are not forgotten. I just want you to know the Halian Dan Don Lone, you are not forgotten. The Lord said I should tell my people I have not forgotten them beverly you have not been forgotten god has not forgotten you you might not be where you want to be but god said to tell you you have not been forgotten he remember you continue in prayer hallelujah jesus continue in prayer he has not forgotten you i just want to say welcome to all Sister Kerry, you have not been forgotten. My daughter Yolanda, you have not been forgotten. Chev, my other daughter, you have not been forgotten. God has not forgotten you. Hallelujah. Let me share something with you. You might be in the brook of cherry right now where everything is running out. You don't know what gonna happen next you have not forgotten he has not forgotten you he remember you continue in prayer Talika he has not forgotten you 
Sister Anik, he said he will never forget you. Hallelujah. Whatever you are doing, whatever God tell you to do, continue to press forward. Push. Press on for the eye mark, for the calling, and look to Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of your faith. You are not forgotten. He remembers you. When you think all is lost, he said to tell you, you are on his mind. You are on his mind. He paid your debt. He paid a debt that he never owed. We all owe a debt that we couldn't pay. And Jesus paid it all. You have not been forgotten. I don't know who God sent me here specifically to. But I just want you to know. In the Bible, in the book of 1 Kings, there is a word for somebody. Before we get into it, let us pray. God has not forgotten you. He will never forget you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will never turn his back on you. When everyone else turned their back on you, God said, He will take you up. This evening, people of God, open your mouth this hour and let us come in agreement and tell God thank you for what He is about to do in your life, for the things that He's about to turn around for you. Tell Him thanks. Father, in the name of Jesus. We come before you this hour and we say thank you, Jesus. Daddy, we say thank you. We say thank you, Daddy, for remembering us. We say thank you, Lord, for this word that's about to come forth. Oh, God, breathe afresh upon your people this hour. Let your will be done in their life according to your word. Take over, Holy Spirit. Take charge right now. We invite you in our midst. We saturate the whole place with the blood of Jesus Christ. My God. We baptize the atmosphere with the blood. And Lord, we say thank you for the blood. You paid our debt. You have paid our debt. You have dropped our charges. Glory to God. We give you honor and praise. Lord, we honor you right now. We adore you. We are here to seek your face. My God, my God, my God. Show up, Holy Ghost. Show up mighty and strong. And let your will be done. Thank you, Jesus. Covenant keeping God. I cover every soul that is on their way to view this platform. And for those that are here, bless them, O oh God. And for those that will watch the replay, mighty God, show up in your life. And let your will be done. Welcome to those who will watch tomorrow. Welcome, mighty God. I welcome you all. I cover myself right now in the blood. And I give honor and praise to the most high God. Daddy Jesus, in your name, in your holy name, in your precious name, I say thank you. We give you honor and praise in the matchless name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Welcome, 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 people of God. Let me share something with you. We have a crisis. El Chadai Prayer Tower, we have a crisis. There's a young woman that is a part of this ministry. She has cancer. When she came to this platform, she came with cancer. She became in alignment with the word. And the cancer fell from stage three to stage two. 
some way, some way along the line. I don't know. She got distracted. She stopped coming. She stopped. Yes. When I call, I don't hear from her. I'm praying. I'm still praying. Now, recently, a few days ago, while I was away in Jamaica, she sent me a message. I know the thing is spiritual, that the cancer is back, and it's worse than before. Now it's at stage four. I reached out to her on my way trying to go and see her. I call her. She did not she didn't know who I was. And I you know, I said to her, This is Rev. She said, I can't talk to you right now. I know this thing is not of God. So I came out here this evening asking for prayers for this young woman. As much as I love her, I went to see her, I couldn't see her. She told me she can't talk to me right now. I know the thing is not of God. People of God, I'm asking the Lord to give her a miracle. To shame the devil. That's my prayer. When she was on the live, the spirit of cancer was leaving. It went all the way to stage two. Now she said it's at stage four. She don't show up anymore. I don't know what happened. She will send me messages. I want you to know, people of God, wherever God send you, stay there. I'm asking the Lord for a miracle for this young woman. She has two small children. One is still a toddler. And the other one just turned maybe 14. People of God, I ask you, I beseech you by the mercies of God to back me up in prayer for Sandrika Williams. When she was on the live, she was getting better. I don't know what kind of wind blow and got the woman contaminated. So I'm asking you to back me up to pray for her. We prayed for her before and cancer went down from stage three to stage two. She was getting better. She was doing well. Somehow, the devil entered. You see, the Bible said we shouldn't leave any back door open for the enemy to enter. And I say it right here with no apologies because the thing is not of God. When I reach out to her to go and visit her, she didn't know who I was. And when I told her who I am, she said she can't talk to me right now. Everything is back to normal because I'm not there. This is how the devil operates. People of God, the moment you stop praying, the moment you leave the covenant that God placed you under, you're in trouble. Sometimes we get in our feelings because God is not working fast enough. So we want to try somebody else. Be careful. Be careful trying to try someone else. Be careful going out there. Allowing your ears to be tingled. Don't allow the enemy to tingle your ears. So we're praying in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. To destroy the spirit of cancer from this young woman's life. We prayed before. And it 
slowly was leaving. I don't know what kind of wind blow down there in Kingston. But when I show up in Kingston to pray for the woman, she was busy. She couldn't wait to meet me. But when I got there, she was busy. People of God, stay under the covenant that God placed you. People of God, be obedient. Don't get discouraged. I came to tell you, if God placed you here on this platform, and you don't see me on the live, go back and watch an old one. Be careful of who you follow. The moment other people start to minister to her, the cancer came back stronger. Because she leave. She left. And she know that I knew. So I encourage you people of God. Wherever God place you, don't leave. Even when things look dark and dim, don't leave. God sent Elijah into a brook of chariot. There was only a little brook, a little bit of water like a gutter running down, trickling. And that's where God sent him to feed him. God said, I will send birds, raven to feed you. And Elijah went there. And when the brook dry up, God sent Elijah someplace else to a widow. A widow, someone who is not employed, someone who have nothing. Sometimes God will send you to someone who have nothing. It's your faith. According to your faith, your blessing is measured according. Jesus. Your blessing is measured according to your faith. She left the platform. I knew she left the platform. And when I tried to reach her, no answer. I came to tell someone here, be careful what you seek. Be careful what you seek. Hallelujah. Be careful where you are searching. Somebody said God is not moving fast enough. So they're going to look elsewhere. People of God, be careful where you search. The internet can be good and it can be bad. I'm not telling you that this is the best, the best platform. But when the woman showed up with her cancer and we prayed, it went down. The moment she leave, glory be to God. She's in trouble now, in pain. When I call, I hear different people in the background ministering. You see, you have to be careful what you place in your spirit. There is nothing I can do but pray. That's it. All I can do is pray. But in the meantime, it's your faith that will make you whole. It is your faith. It doesn't matter who pray for you. Loneliness hurts. Some people, they are good. In the daytime. But the moment it gets dark. They're scared of the dark. People of God, I'm talking in parables tonight. Let us lift the woman before God. When I look at the message she sent me. I feel like I was choking. And I asked God, what is this? He said, because she left the covenant that he placed her under. So let us pray and remember this woman. Let us remember her. 
God will never move you from a place that he send you. Unless he is, unless the brook dry up. Now, according to the book of 1 Kings chapter 17, the Bible said, And the word of the Lord came to Elijah, came to him saying, Get thee hence and turn to thee, turn thee eastward, and hide thyself in the brook. Sometimes you find yourself in a situation, God is hiding you. Sometimes you find yourself, you meet some people who God is also hiding. Sometimes your blessing is not in the crowd. Glory to God. He said to the man, hide thyself by the brook that is before Jordan. My God. Many of us, we can't wait. We get impatient with God. And God is saying, I want you to myself. I don't want you in the crowd. I don't want you with the crowd. I want you to myself. Here, according to the word of God. Hallelujah. We are, if, you're, if, if you have your Bible, underline this. It's 1 Kings chapter 17. Hallelujah. I'm, I, I don't know, but the Lord is saying that this message is about to release somebody yes first king 17 mm -hmm. god said to the man go hide many of us we don't want to hide we want to be seen we don't want to be isolated and god is saying that's the only way i can fix you when i have you to myself some of us we are surrounded by the wrong people Jesus Christ. Some of us are some of us are surrounded by the wrong people and we cannot breathe free because God don't have access to us. We are too busy. We make ourselves unnecessarily busy. Too busy for the Lord. Too busy to pray. It's always something. My God. Jesus. You see, if you don't resist the devil, he won't flee. If you don't resist the devil, he won't flee. The woman came on the platform and testified. And now she's gone. All I'm seeing is text. And when I call her, that's how I knew what happened. I hear different people in the background recordings playing. And the problem is worse than when she came. People of the people of God wait on the Lord. People of God wait on the Lord. Sometimes God wants you by yourself, so He sends you to chariot where there is not much activity taking place. He don't send you where there is a bling, 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 bling. No, he send you where everything looks funny. Because he is working it out. God don't want your help, people of God. God is a helper. He's our helper. He is our helper. And he will send divine help. Don't go out there trying to help yourself. Allow the Lord to fix you. I'm praying for the woman. And what I'm praying is for a miracle to take place in her life to shame the devil. It doesn't matter who pray for you. If you're not ready to receive that prayer, it won't work. It doesn't matter how powerful the prayers are. You got to be ready to receive it. Hallelujah. God said, go to the east and hide by Cherith Brook near where it enters Jordan River. It's a brook that it's close to Jordan River. 
He said, drink from the brook and eat what the ravens bring to you. For I have commanded them to bring you food. Anybody know anything about ravens? They are scavengers. They only eat dead meat. Again, if he sent Elijah for ravens to feed him, things look funny right there as well. Things look funny when God is in control. The wisdom of God is foolishness to man. I'm here teaching the word of God for you to receive, to grow. It's up to you what you want to do with it. My job is to sit down and bring it to you. In truth and honesty. And I will never sugarcoat the word just to please you. Nor my children. Nor people who know me. I will never tailor my message for you to feel good. My name is not Pastor Feel Good. I have never ever declared that. My name is not Pastor Feel Good. And God never sent me to make anybody feel good. I will speak to you with love. Not to feel good. There is no scripture in the Bible that says this one will make you feel good. There is no word in the Bible that says this will make you feel good. There is no feel good scripture in the Bible. It's either it's going to convict you. Or it's going to heal you. If you're sick, it will heal you. If you're too comfortable, it will convict you, but not to feel good. There is no feeling good scripture around here. And if you don't believe me, ask somebody who studied the word more than you, and you will know. Hallelujah. No, I'm going to have to pray harder. Whatever happened, she got contaminated. People of God, take God serious. Take the things of God serious. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Trust God. Even when you don't understand what God is doing, trust God. Stop trying to figure things out on your own. The other day, I asked someone to cook me a meal. But I make my order the day before. And when the morning come, the Lord said, cancel that order. The Lord said, cancel that order. You order food, cancel the order. It was a special request for the meal. And uh, when I make the phone call to cancel the order, all I heard was, we are not cooking today. Ten hours later, I was hungry. I had a little bit of something to munch on, but I, I needed a meal. So I went to get a bottle of water. Have you ever been somewhere and you have money to buy the food and there's no food? <laughs> so I opened my big mouth and I said to the person that was selling me the water, I wish I could get something to eat. Do you guys have food to sell? And lo and behold, the owner for the place that I was asking for the meal turned to me and asked me if I would take a plate from them. I said, depending on what it is, because I'm picky with food. And let me share something with you, you know, what the Lord did. The man got on the phone and he called his wife and he said, we have a crisis. I'm giving it as I got it. I was right there proving God. In the deepest, in my weakness, God showed up. Remember, he told me in the morning, cancel the order for the meal you ordered. That's all he said. And the man said to his wife, even if you have to sh give her my dinner, 
No, I know. I've never seen these people before in my life. He said, go back to where you're staying and we will find you. Ten minutes later, I heard a knocking on the door. And the food came and I asked, what kind of meal is this? Let me tell you what they say to me. When they tell me what's in the plate, I said, really? The lady said, yes, my husband said, you don't want no rice. But there's a little rice in it because the plate was already made and he said, bring his meal if I can't find you anything. And when I got the meal, I told her, thank you and God bless you. And I placed it, put the tray down. And I began to worship God because it was exactly what I ordered the day before. Wait on the Lord. Sometimes it's not just the food, it's just the order. God set an order. God set standards. There was nothing wrong with the cook. But God wanted to prove something to me. So I came to let you know tonight, wherever God placed you, stay there. There's a reason behind everything. According to the book of Ecclesiastes, to everything there is a season. To everything there is a season. And when you don't wait on the Lord, you'll get into trouble with Satan. When you don't listen to the voice of God, Satan will attack you. When you disobey God, the devil, you're giving the devil access to you. What I did, I took a picture of the meal. And I send it to the chef that I ordered from. Because it's Saturday night. And Sunday we have hurricane. Can't go anywhere. Can't move. When God set a standard. My God. We just have to be obedient. God raised up standards. I'm here to let you know people of God. Stay in your office. Stay in your lane. God told Elijah. He said go down there to that place. The brook. He didn't say go to Jordan. He said go to Cherith. Cherith is right by Jordan. He said and drink that water. Anybody remember? The man that did not want to dip into Jordan River. But God sent the man of God to go and drink water. That was running next to Jordan River. Glory to God. People of God be obedient. Be obedient. I came out here tonight to share this. Be obedient. So Elijah went to Cherry. And the birds. Now. Maybe if it was you. Or I myself. We wouldn't want to eat what ravens carry. Ravens. Eat their scavengers, they only eat dead meat, so I know they might have a smell. But what God bless, hey, hey, whatever God bless, no man can curse. You might be in the brook of chariot, ravens might be bringing you food, and you might be wondering when is this going to end. One day that brook will dry up. And God will give you another assignment. My God, the Bible said, God said to Elijah, drink from the brook and eat what the ravens bring. You cannot eat anything else. It's whatever God said. It doesn't matter what anything else looked like. God isolated him and put him in a place where there was no one. He said, go hide. And when God is hiding you, he will provide for you. When God hide you, you will never fall short because he is hiding you. You are under his care. God said, humble yourself. Go and drink that water. 
It doesn't matter who complain about the water. It's your water to drink. I am giving you an assignment and that's the water I want you to drink. Many of us when God tell us some things because we think it's beneath us. We don't want it. We think that is too local. So we don't want nothing from the locals. We want it from the high and the mighty. When God is trying to humble us. We need to humble ourselves. We need to relax ourselves. Glory to God. I order from the big top chef. From hell kitchen. Yes. The big chef in hell kitchen. And God said no. Cancel the order. I didn't have to cancel the order. When I called the chef. The chef said the kitchen is off duty. No cooking today. Kitchen closed. God sent Elijah to the brook to humble him. What did God tell you to do? God want to humble us. Hallelujah. The Bible says so Elijah did as the Lord told him. He went to the brook and the ravens would come each morning and evening and drink. He would, hey Jesus, you know, Ravens are big birds. And they like. They don't eat fresh meat. It, it, dead meat. So they get a lot. They eat whatever is spoiled. Rotten stuff. Now these birds would come in the morning. And in the evening. And Elijah would drink from the brook. So there was food. It wasn't a lot. Because if bird is bringing you food, you're not getting abundance. So you have to wait. Many of us need to wait. We are too hyper. We cannot wait on God. Because we said God is moving too slow. And we need to go fast. Everything belongs to God. Everything belongs to God. I don't know how the Lord brought me to this scripture. But I came to talk to somebody here today. Somebody will be caught up about this word. But I came to let you know. Humble yourself. It doesn't matter what you are used to. It doesn't matter which place you've been. It doesn't matter who you know. God is saying go to the brook. And the brook is where you're supposed to go. It doesn't matter how much money in your pocket. Go to the brook. Somebody said God is directing you to the brook. To hide. Everybody don't need to see you right now. God wants you to shut down. And get into prayers. God is saying it's time to shut down. Too much Hyper, it's not working. You need a cleansing. When you go to the brook, that water will cleanse you. Whatever the ravens bring, it will fix you. Hallelujah. According to the word of God. The Bible said the ravens brought him bread and meat each morning and evening. And he drank from the brook. But after a while, the brook dry up. You see, sometimes God, we, we, we see things look like it's not going anywhere. Our pastor is on fasting. Pastor didn't go live today. Let me go listen to somebody else. Be careful where you're running to. According to the word, the brook dry up. And Elijah could not leave because God had to send him elsewhere. He couldn't go, so he could never go over to Jordan. As close as the brook was to Jordan. He could never enter Jordan. God never said Jordan. He said Cherik. And Cherik is right by Jordan. And if it's a brook. It's not a big. It's a trench. It's not big. So it dried up. There was nothing else in the brook. Elijah drink all the water that was in the brook. Glory to God. So now, guess what? He have to hear again from the Lord. When God give us an assignment and it's completed, he will speak again. He don't want us to go ripping and running trying to get things done. 
He already took care of it. No. The Bible said the brook dried up. Mighty God. For there was no rainfall anywhere in the land. Remember, Jordan River was next to the brook. God never said go to Jordan. He said go to the brook. The brook dry up. The Bible, according to the word of God, if you just join, we are in the book of 1 Kings chapter 17. 1 Kings chapter 17 and we are going to verse 8. According to the word of God, it said, Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go and live in the village of Zarephath, near the city of Sidon. I have instructed a widow to feed you. Again, now, a widow, that means her husband is dead. How is a widow going to feed a man of God? Only God can do that. Remember, the man of God was eating from the ravens. Raven birds, if you know anything about ravens, they only eat spoiled rotten meat. Scavengers. That's what God was using to feed the man of God because he said to the man of God, hide yourself sometimes god wants us to hide but we are so extra and high-minded we want everybody to see us sometimes god said hide god want to separate us so he can work on us we have so much flaws and we act as if we don't know god is saying it's time to get fixed up stay in your lane stay in your office allow god to work on you the secret of the Lord is with them that trust him. God has secret, but he only reveal it to who trust him. Do you trust God? Do you trust the Lord? Do you trust him to direct you from the brook to a widow? So a widow could feed you. If a widow is going to feed you, it means you have to humble again. He didn't send him to a palace. And the story goes. So he went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the gates of the village. He saw a widow woman gathering sticks. And he asked her. Would you please bring me a little water. He was thirsty. He was obedient. He waited until he get to Zarephath. To ask for water. Do you know how far it is. From Cherry to Zarephath. He didn't stop along the way. To beg anybody anything. People of God. I came to ask you a question tonight. Are you humble? Are you obedient to God? Do you hear what God said? Do you obey his voice? Are you in alignment with the word? I wanted some real good Jamaican food. And one of the things I love when I'm in Jamaica is boiled green bananas and curry goat. So I ordered it from Saturday. So Sunday it would be ready. And when daylight Sunday morning, God said, cancel the order. And when I make that phone call, all I heard, kitchen closed. And 10 hours later, God provided that meal from a different kitchen. I didn't ask them for it. It was already prepared. People of God, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. God have a plan. He said, I know the plans I have towards you. I know the thoughts I think towards you. Thoughts of good and not evil. To take you to an expected end. God wants to take you to an expected end. The woman was doing good when she was with us. She was cheerful. She was praying. Everything was going great. And the moment she decided to try something else, the devil entered. Stay where God sent you. Many people, God sent them someplace and they got bored. Mm -hmm. Because things are not going according to their plan. What about God's plan? What kind of plan did God have for you? Why are you leaving? Why are you running away? Don't be in your feelings when it comes to God's business. God don't care how you feel. He said, I will give you pastors according to my heart. 
You heard about somebody who can preach and you decide to join them. You are on your own. You leave the covenant that you are under. You are on your own. You left. You are on your own. No, we are dealing with stage 4 cancer. It went down from stage 3 to stage 2. And we have been praying. You left. Now you are coming back with stage 4. Where did you go? Who lay hands on you? I didn't touch you. All I did was pray. And God answered. You see, God could heal you in a minute. It's your faith. Many people are in certain situations because of their faith. It's not where it's supposed to be. Elijah was obedient to God. He feared God. So he moved in faith. He understood that God was not done with him yet. My God. It'll, if you miss the first half of it, you have to go back and watch it. So when he found the woman, he asked her for water. Because where he's coming from, the water run out. So the first thing he's asking for is water. And that's just the beginning of another chapter. According to the word, the woman, the Bible said, he asked for the water. He said, would you please bring me a little water in a cup? As she was going to get it, he called to her and said, bring me a bite of bread too. The woman don't have no bread. She's going to give him some tough conversation. Because this woman was on her way to her deathbed. But this was also to bring the woman faith to life. I don't know who God sent me here to talk to tonight. But we are praying for one young woman with stage 4 cancer. And my prayer is God give her a miracle. Jesus, that is my prayer for she to call with a testimony like she did before. People of God, any covenant that you are under that God place, you don't leave. The moment you leave could be the moment that your breakthrough would come. Don't try to figure things out when God is on the job. When you pray and give God the steering wheel then don't try to be a navigator when you place it in his hands leave it in his hands when you give god your burdens don't take it from him and give it to somebody else no god is jealous god is jealous and so stage four cancer jump from stage stage two cancer jump back from stage two all the way to four 90% of the body is loaded with cancer. But I know there is a bomb in Gilead. And I'm praying that the Lord do something. I'm praying that the Lord give her a miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It's my prayer. That God show up. That's my prayer. There's nothing else I can do but pray. When I call her Thursday, I had some time on my hands. And then she said, who is this? I said, it's Pastor Ratigan. She said, I can't talk right now. There were other people in the background praying. And I just asked God to take over. People of God, let me share something with you. Stay on the Lord's side. Stay on the Lord's side. It doesn't matter the amount of money you have that cannot stop sickness. Money is not blessings. It's the blessings of the Lord that make it rich and add no sorrow to your life. It's blessings that make it rich. Hallelujah. I come here every day and I say this, people of God, don't go to anybody other than God. 
And wherever God place you, be humble. Elijah was in the brook. I'm going to leave the rest of the message for tomorrow. Elijah was in the brook drinking that water. And when he drink all the water, when the water finished from the trench, then God said, go to the widow woman. God never said, go to the palace and meet the king. No. He said, go meet that widow woman. The woman husband died. She will feed you. You see what she was gathering? Sticks. And he beggar water. People of God, let us humble ourselves. I say this all the time. Don't listen. I'm going to use a proverb now. Don't listen to the noise in the market. Watch the sale. Don't listen to the noise in the market. Watch the sale. You cannot come to God and still doing the same things you did in the past. I don't know who God is using me to talk to right now. You, I can't say this right here. God is here with us and he's listening. Anybody remember when that king, I think I brought this word sometime last week, I don't remember when. The word of God came, I think it's in 2 Kings, when the same Elijah, God sent him to the king to tell the king, why are you seeking witchcraft? You have a sickness and you're not seeking God. Do you think there is no God in Israel? And the king sent his 50 men to Elijah. Elijah said, if I be a man of God, let fire come and strike them. And the 50 men died in the fire. Elijah called fire from heaven twice. And the third group of men that came, the man said, please. And he went down on his knees. And he asked for forgiveness for the king. On behalf of the king. People of God. Be careful what you seek. Don't just jump into something because it's glittering and it's glamming. Let me share this with you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. It's not everything that looks pretty is pretty. One woman told me that she heard about a lady in Kingston. And she visited with a cousin. And when she visited the woman, she said she heard she was a pastor. The woman is a pastor. And when she got there and she realized she had to pay for the readings. I said, what reading? I thought you said the woman is a pastor. She said, oh my God, I'm so ashamed when I found out that this woman is a Wobia woman. People of God, be careful of where people are introducing you. Not everybody that's preaching is preaching Bible people of God. Be careful of these people that are practicing witchcraft. They bring a different spirit. It only makes your problems worse. And I say it with no apologies. I'm not babbling right here. I mean every word I'm saying. Be careful of the places that they are introducing to you. God is not an altar of confusion. When you come to God, you must come believing that he is a rewarder that diligently seek him. God is jealous. God is a jealous God. He is faithful to forgive us for our sins. But we cannot continue to live in sin and think God is playing. God play rough. The reason why some people are still battling with stuff is because God is not laughing with them anymore. God said, I will only get mad for a time. I will only get angry for a time. God is serious. And matters like these, we have to discuss it. We cannot push it under the carpet. 
When you pray in your secret closet, God will bless you openly. You know, I'm here. I take God's work seriously. And many people are afraid to talk to me because I'm radical. Let me say this to you. By chance, given the opportunity you receive one to meet me in person, you will see why I take the things of God seriously. I fear God. I fear God. The Bible make it clear that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So when you fear God, wisdom begins. It doesn't matter your qualifications. It doesn't matter your education. I fear God. Paul said, when I was a child, I act like a child. I do the things like a child. But now that I am a man, I no longer do childish things. You came to the platform. By now, you're supposed to be walking right. If you are in your flesh, you're not going to like this. It's time to come out of your flesh. So God can use you. So the Spirit of the Lord can dwell among you. God wants to bless His people. It's not the will of God for any one of us to suffer our struggle. No. It's not the will of God for any one of us to suffer. There is no one laying in the hospital bed that is the will of God. No. He said, above all things, I pray that you prosper and be in good health as your soul prospereth. So God don't want none of us to suffer and die before our time. So when someone is going through some things, you know this. You know, come on. You came here with stage 3 cancer. It went down to stage 2. You leave. And now it's at stage 4. That's not of God. You see, many of us, we throw away the sticks before we fully cross over the water. No! Don't throw away your stick before you cross the water. You will need it. My God. I came here this evening with lesson 101. God is jealous. And anything we put before God, he will destroy it. He will separate himself. He's a gentleman. He will never impose anything on you. It's your choice. It's your choice. Many people get into trouble and then they blame pastor. Because they switch sides. They take different sides. They leave the covenant that they have been under. That God placed them. And then they place their burdens on pastor. No. No. That's not how it works. We can't bind up anything. When we don't see what to bind up. When you leave. And you're gone. You got contaminated. Then you come back crying. Tomorrow might be too late. People of God, if you're here and you're not saved, think about giving your life to the Lord because God is jealous. We want to eat and drink and enjoy life and do everything in the world and still said we are children of God. Think about yourself. According to Isaiah, examine yourself. According to Isaiah, let's reason this out. First Corinthians said, examine yourself. According to Isaiah, he said, let us reason together. He said to Jeremiah, before you were placed in your mother's womb, I knew you. So God knew who we are. Are we going to change to please God or to please man? People of God, don't throw away your stick until you cross the water. I was about to go and pray for the woman to see her in person. 
And she told me she can't talk right now. I know that was not of God. But I humble myself. You cannot enter into a place that you're not welcome. You cannot enter into a place where you're not welcome. You cannot perform where you... But I pray that from afar, the Lord perform a miracle. So I can hear the testimony. All I care about is the testimony. Nothing else. I encourage you to walk good. I encourage you to live right. I encourage you to live clean. Elijah humbled himself. He was a man of God. He performed miracles. Yes, he called fire from heaven. Do you think he couldn't find a place to go and get water to drink? Of course he could. Do you think he didn't know anybody that he, any king where he could go and live like a king, dine with kings and queens? Yes, he could. But he humbled himself before God. God said, go to the widow. God is not... Mm. God said, hide. And when God said, hide, hide, you're supposed to hide. Everybody don't need to know our story. There are some people going around telling everybody everything when God is saying, pray in your closet. I will bless you openly. Go and lock up in your closet and pray. I will burst you out. Hallelujah. God said it. He said, go in your secret closet and pray. Stop calling everybody and giving them the same prayer request. You don't know who is with you. You don't know. Mm. No. Look what's on our hands. Look what kind of burden. Because of somebody's disobedience. Hallelujah. God is faithful. He is faithful. But we have to be obedient. We cannot, you know, there's a word called presumptuous sin. We cannot keep living in sin and presumptuous with it. And then when trouble come, oh God, forgive me. But we do the same thing the next day. God don't like ugly. I came this hour to encourage someone who is still playing games with God. No more lies. No more lies. No more lies. No more. It's time to wake up. Don't try people. Say you're going to try out this place. Don't try out any place. Go to God and ask him to lead you someplace. Wherever you need to go, ask God to lead you. If God don't permit it, don't do it. I was in a place, I had some money in my pocket to buy a food. And there was no food. And even when I order food, with good intentions, God said, cancel the order. Sometimes it's not like God don't want you to do anything. God wants you to behave yourself and humble. He wants you to listen to him. It's, oh, I, I, you know, I always say this. It's okay for anybody to leave. But make sure you know you pack up and leave for your own reasons. You didn't leave because Rev did something to you or asked you for something. You leave because that's your choice. I always tell people, go try other stuff. If you're not believing in the word of God, that's here. Try what you want to try. Try whatever you want to try. If you don't believe in what God is doing here. But I'm not going to join you to criticize the place that you have been to. No. I don't do that. So I came to say this right here. I thank God for the word. 
I thank God for what he's about to do in your life. I thank God. You know, one woman said to me today, she received so many testimonies. Let me see if I can find a picture. A woman said to me, woman, pastor, the other day we were praying and you said we should pray for our children, for God to bring them good spouse. Hallelujah. And right here, her daughter got engaged. She said, Pastor, I prayed. Because you said we should pray that our children get godly spouse. See, the big pretty ring. Look, and this was last week. Or a week and a half or so. She said, Rev, I had to send her the picture. My daughter got engaged. We pray. Believe. Just be Jesus Christ. Jesus said, repent and believe. The word came. I don't remember everything. So she sent me a picture. She said, you said we should pray for God to send godly spouse to our children. Pray for our children. And look, people of God, right here. See? You won't see the name because my finger is on her name. But that's the picture. Her daughter got engaged. Because she came and she believed and she tapped in. People of God, when you come here and we are praying, tap into what God is doing. I'm not bragging or showing off. I'm just saying this picture came. When did it come? Saturday. She said, I had to show you. I remember. Let me read it. I remember when you preach about the wedding, asking God to bless the man and the woman, our children going to marry. It's true. When you believe and you receive it in your spirit, it will be tangible. These are the things that God is doing on this platform. People of God, wake up. You know in your heart that God sent you here. I'm not saying other people's platform are not good. But what I'm saying, if this is where God sent you, relax yourself. If this is where God sent you and your family, just relax. Every message is not going to suit you because everybody has to get their breakthrough. What will hurt your feelings will be a blessing to someone else. So just relax. Just relax. God is so jealous that he will allow the devil to touch people. Yes. God is so jealous that when we stray, he will allow the devil to touch us. So we can come back to him. So tonight I ask you, you know yourself. You know you fell apart. You know you fell back a little bit. It's time to turn it all over to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. My God. I'm here with the word, the truth. And another thing, a lot of women and men, based on their culture, they don't like to hear women preachers. No. Even if wherever they're going, they've been lied to, they don't care as long as it's not a woman. Another thing, once they hear your accent, they stereotype you. All you got to listen to is the word of God. Forget about the accent. Forget about who is preaching. Forget about the skin color. Listen to the word of God. My God. Just listen. I just want you all to know. We will be praying. For the woman with the cancer. We prayed before. And the cancer went down. She left us. Now it's spiked up. Took over 90% of her body. I'm angry at the devil. I'm not angry at her. I'm angry. It's the work of the enemy to disgrace us. So I'm angry at Satan. So I encourage you to pray and ask God for a miracle for the woman. Hallelujah. I remember there was a time when the Lord used us to bless her too. But I came to let you know, people of God, let us be obedient. Today is day 11 of the month 
and we have our charity event coming up on the 15th of the month i know i was away for a couple of days and i came back i had to get my strength back so i encourage you to remember your position charity is blessings coming from above be a part of it i encourage you my brothers and my sisters be a part of it i know a couple of months ago i said i was gonna have an announcement so two days ago which was what friday i made the announcement friday night yes i made the announcement that um everybody who is committed to this platform knew i was in school been in school for a long time too long for my age i'm too old for school so god has settled me with my exams and i got an a plus in my grades now i don't know exactly when will be graduation but it will be a date to be announced it will be sometime in this month which is good i thank god knock on wood so i'm praying for those of you who are interested in watching it on zoom let me know so i can send you the link when it's sent to me let me know if you are interested in visiting my you see i'm excited to invite people on my graduation this year because i did well why last year i received a b and i was disappointed mm -hmm. last year i received a b i was disappointed this year i got an a plus so for those of you who are interested in watching graduation graduation is boring because i find it to be boring but to watch rev receive that that diploma on zoom it would be something to remember so uh, some people were watching it last year while i was away i had graduation while i was doing charity my graduation i could not even dress up because i just came back off of the street from doing charity work in dominica republic and i just sat there and hear them talking and i'm like thank god it's over no it's completely over I don't know maybe i might go back to school for a couple of months to do something that i like to add to this diploma that i'm about to receive but if you are interested at any point that you would want to see the graduation send me a message on um messenger or i will be able to send the link from whatsapp or messenger so if you have the whatsapp number 860-634-8557 send me a message on whatsapp and said um please remember to send me the link i'm interested in watching the graduation it will be sometime this month maybe in a couple of weeks i don't know excuse me i don't know but i will um be glad to share it with you so you can hear what they have to say about me i don't know you see i'm grumpy i'm a grumpy old lady if you should meet me in person you're gonna say I didn't know you were so short. I didn't know you look like this. I didn't know. Yeah, but I'm a humble servant. Above all, I am a humble servant. So if, if anyone here is interested in watching the graduation, <laughs> okay, the messages start coming in. <laughs> I will share the link with you so you can inbox me on WhatsApp 8606348557 or you can inbox me on Messenger. Go ahead, don't hesitate to do. It won't be live on Facebook, no. It would be on Zoom. Amen. So we thank God that our rev have a graduation coming up and something that we can look forward to, right? And please remember, people of God, we have charity coming on the 15th. Now, after the 15th, I have a special request, but I won't say anything now. I have a request from El Shaddai Prayer Tower. El Shaddai Prayer Tower, I have a request from for you. 
and it we <laughs> somebody somebody's talking already <laughs> somebody is already talking oh jesus help me so el Shaddai prayer tower i have a request a special request and the reason why i don't ask anybody for anything because i'm not used to anybody telling me no and in order to prevent someone from telling me no i be quiet but i have a request and it will be after the charity after the charity i will give my request it's a special request hallelujah so i'm saying it now i'm gonna ask for a love gift and it will be after the 15th of the month because on the 15th we have our charity we have to honor and obey the word of god and that has nothing to do with me personally so i'm gonna rock over to el shaddai prayer tower all the intercessors all the warriors from el shaddai prayer tower i'm not gonna inbox anybody i'm just gonna say it out loud on the 15th after we have the charity so once again if this message has touched your heart go ahead and be a blessing to the ministry i just want to say this god thank you all thank you thank you thank you thank you many of you might not even understand that i could not I could not do it without you. My professors told me to stay off of social media. I was disobedient. I didn't do it. I didn't listen to them. I'm going to say it now. I did not listen to them. They said, you cannot write this paper and be on social media. It will drain you. And I did not listen one bit. And because of that, I was embarrassed to ask any one of my professors to help me. To, to, to review my paper because the Lord said to me this is the best one of the best paper you have ever written so I was yes I, and it was late number one number two I was stubborn because I didn't come off of Facebook and I didn't want them to find any fault so I didn't show them the paper I just said you know what God you deal with it they told me not to go to social media. They told me not to preach because I'm doing this. But God, you deal with this because I love to preach. This is what I do best. So God dealt with it. And I got an A+. Plus. So now, you see, if you want to show off, show off about Jesus. Don't show off about what you have. Talk about Jesus Christ. They told me don't preach. So I was supposed to be quiet for maybe five or six months while writing the paper. None of you here knew what I was going through. I lost all my hair. I lost some friends too while I was writing this paper. I almost lost my mind. Because sometimes I felt like I didn't have any vitamins in my body and I was taking vitamins. So I, I was falling apart. But thanks be to God he kept me. People of God, we cannot envy anybody for what they have when it comes to education because it's not easy. Not everybody have the capacity to maintain, to go so far. But tonight, I pray that the Lord give you the capacity to maintain, to go higher, to finish what you started in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That is my prayer, that the Lord bless you to finish what you started bless your children to finish and settle your children in marriage my god i pray god settle you and your children <laughs> i'm not young i might look young but i'm an old lady i feel old because i have a lot of information up here that's why you know so I'm saying, I'm praying that the Lord settle you even in marriage. Because some people are married, but they are not really married. I'm praying for God to settle that. I'm praying for God to settle you in your education, in your career, in your business, in your ministry. I'm praying for the Lord to settle you. I'm praying for your testimony to come forth in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. 
Hallelujah. So I encourage you, people of God, continue to support the ministry so the ministry can be of help to those in need. There are some people that need a blessing. They don't need the money. They need the blessing. So when they receive, when the money hit their account, it will be a blessing to them. That's what the money is all about. Blessings. It's not a lot. So we have to continue to do this. It's not a lot. Amen. So I encourage your people of God to continue to be a blessing to the ministry. So the ministry can continue the work of Almighty God. My time is up. I have to go. I will be here tomorrow. And if you don't see me, just provoke me. Woman of God, where are you? Yeah, just knock, knock. Where are you? I'm right here. Hallelujah. My time is up. I have to go. I just want to say I love you with the love of the Lord. Instagram, continue to share the platform. Facebook, continue to share it. Remember, YouTube is Rev Joycelyn Radigan. Hallelujah. So we need more subscribers on YouTube. People of God, I don't know. A lot of things are going to happen throughout the rest of this year with the ministry. I encourage you to be a part of it. So you can see what God is doing. Amen. Once again, my time is up. I have to go. God bless you all.